Hello, this everyone. Is this is the Curvaceous Bounty, and I'm your guest, Michelle Austin, and I'm having a great time with the ladies today. Ooh, ooh. Or tonight, ooh, I should say. Great time with you. Now I got to go back to my question. <laughs> <laughs> no, now, now, okay, we're at the point where, okay, it took Daddy a little longer to accept than it took, but like, tell me about the conversation. Was it over the phone, or did you? No, no, no. Um, what it was with was your brothers, sisters, all that. Um, with my um brothers, the my brothers, I think, always knew. Um, so it was never, it never really. They were just like, tell us something, yeah, new, right? Yeah. And with, they had no problem with you saying, okay, I'm dressing and being a girl now. Yeah, well, oh, because they saw my drag shows and stuff like that. Oh, so okay. so they had seen that part of me. Um, as far as um, uh, what I did was how to inform my whole family without having to tell everybody. <laughs> I sent my grandma a letter. And my grandma is like the matriarch of oh, our so family. She told everybody. So basically she, well, first of all, what she did was she dissected it and, and had a, meltdown and then um (laughs) (laughs) and then then, um i think when i I came out as being gay at 15 because that's what i thought i was and so um my family had my family's um methodist and go to church every sunday type thing so um at that back then my my ground my my parents and my grandparents went to the church and and talked to the pastor about uh my sexuality and he told him that I was born this way to let him be and then when Good and so then happen. when I began when I told <laughs> when I told them I was trans she went right to that same pastor and he said I was born this way and he kind of accepted and helped my family through the whole process of what was so great was he was a psychiatrist or a psychologist before he was in a minister so um he kind of knew that whole thing and then he related that to um Christianity and stuff like that and he basically said to my family that I was born this way and that's how it all came about now for my father it still took a hard a while for him but it's like um I say he was converting DVD my uh, our home movies to DVDs and that's when he um realized after watching a DVD and plus on Father's Day I sent him a letter and told him it wasn't his fault and that he didn't have any doing to do, do. Yeah, yeah so um my father raised a three which i have two brothers um by himself as a single dad so i think a lot of times he blames since he was blaming himself and then when he seen the actual videos and saw me as a child and saw that i i was actually i was always that so now my dad and mom was a okay um you know what's funny is my mom's been in and out of my life so but my stepmom has been very supportive of of who i am and she's the one that actually told my dad if um, I, I don't remember what Christmas it was, but she said, he's coming home and he's staying here. And if you don't like it, you can leave. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's and great. that's how it all came to. The, so, the... so now it's all good. You can go home and eat turkey dinner. Yeah, I go. Yes, and, I go home, do yeah, all that. Um, I had, Michelle Austin and I had, an on, well, that's my, you know, I've never Michelle Austin. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know Michelle Austin. That's a secret. Now, <laughs> um, as for, yeah, I go home. I, I'm just me. Uh, I'm the same person. My family sees that. I'm the same person, just longer well, hair. And, and you know what? You're probably happier. Oh, yeah. You're probably a happier person to be around because that inner struggle you were having, what am I, what am I going to do, is gone. Well, and I think also what helps my family a lot was I think a lot of my family thought, when they finally were going to see me, they didn't know what I was going to look like. I think a lot of people think what they, what they're going to see of their child is oh, what's going to be on Jerry Springer or what's bad gonna... drags. Yeah, yeah. Bad drag. Yeah, yeah. And so when they saw me, I, you know what? I think my grandma, my grandparents took me to, to dinner at a Mexican restaurant in the town. I went to high school, which was like a few blocks from where I went to high school. And we sat there and ate. And the funniest thing was that I would see people I went to high school with but they didn't know who I was, but I knew who they were. And <laughs> it was kind of like being in disguise or, or kind of like being a hidden camera. You could see what everybody else turned out to be. Yeah. And then, um, but have the, you gone to any reunions? Well, now our reunion didn't happen, but now Facebook, everybody knows. So it's kind of like, if they don't know, then they don't really care. But, um, most people do know and think it's really cool. Um, but as for going to that restaurant, um, the, the bus boy, was hitting on me and that's when i think my grandma realized that i think when you see someone for so long as a certain type and then you're out with them as someone totally different it doesn't grasp them until someone outside of that relationship 
accepts it. accepts it. And she couldn't believe that I was getting hit on as a female. And so it kind of like all played into part. Like little old ladies, just I go to church now. Um, some of the people that I've known since I was five years old know, but some don't. And um, they just think I'm ex. I'm just my grandma's grandkid. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like that. I don't, it's never discussed anywhere unless someone asks what, you know, if someone asks my grandma what happened to him or whatever, uh, she explains it. But other than that, nine times out of 10, um, people are very cool about it. And uh, we have a good old time, give makeup tips and stuff. I, <laughs> I, people always surprise me. You either get, you either get a whole town full of, ignorant bastards who would beat the shit out of you just because you're not what, what they think mm. you should be. Or you get a whole town of people who are like, yeah, whatever. You know what I get <laughs> most of the time when I go back home? Well, I, I moved back home from Chicago with my husband and he had never been to the South. He never seen anything. I remember we went into Walmart and people were staring at us and he goes, oh my God, they know. <laughs> and then I said, I had a, the only tattoo I had was on my chest and I said, it's my tattoo. Down south, women don't have tattoos, and if you do, the old people look down upon you. Right. So uh, that's probably what I get the most is really from the older generations. Like All your tattoos. My tattoos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does your does your uh, husband get any flack when people realize that he's with a TS? Does he does he have to deal with his family? Does he have to deal um, with his family? Friends? Was really cool about it. Uh, like I said, he, I don't know if I said it on the radio, but he was in a relationship with a transsexual right. prior to me, um, who's actually a big time porn star too now, but <laughs> at the time she wasn't a porn star, but, um, they, uh, they were in a, a relationship for three years. But like I said, when he met her, he wasn't, he didn't know she was trans, even though she's six foot three, but he didn't know she was trans. <laughs> um, but, uh, his family never knew about her, and so when the question came about and they found out about me, he told them about her, so it kind of like was... Well, and he had to have had an interest. I mean, you met at a tranny convention. I know he was but he wasn't. Yeah, he didn't know I was trans, though, and oh, he didn't know... Okay. Yeah, he just assumed I was probably there, because there, so there was a lot of genetic question. people there. At what point do you say, yeah, watch feeling down there? <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. When do you yeah. tell people? I've never... But I've never had that issue of usually most guys I've ever dated know my situation. But, but okay, with him, your husband. But him, I, I so told what, him what, I eventually. Right, yeah, oh, right, pretty quick. Yeah. You told him. Oh, Is yeah. it like five minutes before you get naked, or do you have like no, an I actual him, sit down? And, like I told him, there. I gotta tell you. I told him at the event. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I told him when I, after I met him. But what it's it's kind of like, I, but I didn't know he was gonna be into me either. So. I was hitting on him pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> I think I scared him, but then I realized I didn't. But um, uh, yeah, he's been the coolest guy. Um, a lot of people say he's really, um, he's funny. He's his own personality. And so he does his own thing. But uh, does he go to that is the events prettiest with you? Or he, no, he stays in the background? he's not. He doesn't like events. He doesn't like, uh, we went to, I took him to the Tranny Awards a few years ago when I hosted and it's just not his thing. He's just not... Um, he's uh, like a home guy. Yeah, he's just... Well, he just doesn't like being around people. First of all, he doesn't know who I know. So he feels like an outsider when right. you're having a kiki, which we consider uh, having... You're talking with the girls and having a good old time. And you, I kind of forget that he's there. So <laughs> it's kind of like, you know... Is there, so, like a, is there like a little corner for the, the, the non-trans guy husband boyfriends to go sit and hang well, out and talk in? No, because most girls don't have boyfriends that don't bring them to those things or... Um, we call them tranny chasers. They're the ones that sit in the corner oh. and just stare. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, y'all have BBW chasers. We have yeah, tranny we, chasers. We got the chubby chasers. And we, sharks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scumbag over there. Yeah. That one. That's what they'll do sometimes. But um, uh, he he's pretty, yeah, he likes to stay home. Yeah. Like when I went to tranny awards this year to LA and um, I said, I'm going. I said, do you want to go? And then I said, well, you probably just said at the hotel because <laughs> you probably won't like it. But, but he knows. How great is he? Is supportive of what you do? He's very yeah. supportive of what I do. Um, but I've always been the person that 
controls the relationship. So I'm kind of like, I'm the one that tells him what to do. You're the bossy bitch. (laughs) Yeah, I'm the bossy bitch. But um, now he's always supportive of what I do. He's supportive of my career. He's supportive of a lot of things. And he'll tell a lot of people that I'm probably one of the hardest working people he knows. It may not look like I'm working, but I am working. So (laughs) So, let's talk about your dues. Okay, so uh, lately in the news, there's been a lot uh, going on with... Well, first of all, let's talk about Bradley Manning, the traitor, uh, quote-unquote traitor. The WikiLeaks guy. Okay, so uh, uh, Bradley Manning was stationed over in Afghanistan or Iraq or, uh, you know, over in the Mideast. And... um, he was just convicted of uh, selling uh, espionage. espionage. Okay. Now, on the day of his sentencing, on the day of the verdict and the sentencing, he uh, told everybody that he wanted to live his life as Chelsea Manning. Well, what, first, what are your thoughts on the whole traitor thing? Because I'd like to know your politics a little bit. Okay. And then um, I have my ideas about uh, the announcement of Chelsea Manning. <laughs> and I'd like to hear what you think about it. As for political, I don't think he should be. I don't know. I just personally, I, I, I watch a lot of CNN, but I'm very liberal when it comes to politics. So I just don't think that what he leaked was that serious for the crime that he got. But um, as for Chelsea Manning, um, Maybe he's trans and maybe he's not. Uh, maybe this is some kind of attention seeking or maybe it's help. Uh, but I don't think that you can be called Chelsea Manning until you initiate becoming Chelsea Manning. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't go around telling people looking like a man that I'm Michelle when I'm not. Right. Yet. Yeah. Until you get to a point that, you know, you come as. They try to use it as a defense. They tried to use the fact that he's a trans, he's transgender, and he's had to, you know, subdue this all his life because of the military, as his reasoning for making bad decisions to leaking these these. Top so so things. yeah so so, so no, what do you no defense. so what do you think about that whole? I mean, that's the that's an argument there, and doesn't it feed the my penis feed, makes me crazy feed the monster of that transgenders are just you know crazy people. Yeah, that's the part <laughs> that I think is crazy because we're trying so hard to be accepted um equally and then you have someone like this who says oh by the way um i make bad decisions yeah, because yeah, i have a penis we already yeah. knew that top secret documents yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's kind of like you know but for not every trans person's like this kind of like i tell a lot of people not every trans girl's an escort not every trans girl is a porn star not every trans girl is after you for your dick right. <laughs> so a lot of them are into women but um I say also trans, most trans women who live a pretty normal life, you'll never see at a trans club. You'll never see them at a trans event. You won't even know she's sitting next to you. So kind of like, that's kind of like I tell people, you know, but for someone like um, Chelsea Manning or Bradley Manning, I think that he has to, and I don't think the courts, I mean, I don't think the jail should provide his hormones for him. I well, don't think. And he's going to be in Fort Leavenworth, okay, which yeah, is a military no. jail. Yeah. Sorry, my so... taxes are not going to go pay for this guy to become a girl. If he wanted to be a girl, he could have gotten it done on his own time yeah. with his own <laughs> Well, money. and he's going to be in for 20 years. So, you know, when you get out in 20 years, you start your transition. Yeah, because yeah. why do you want to do that? Why would you want to do that in prison? In, prison, exactly. in a military federal prison. See, I don't fact. know how that is, but I've watched plenty of Oz and I know. That I would, I would not want to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, I've got an issue with our tax dollars paying for his hormones. I mean, I, you know, I appreciate, you know, if he truly is trans, the the mental um, things he's going through. But you know what? You're in prison, buddy. Yeah. Ha- have any of you caught uh, the new series, Orange is the New Black? Oh, my favorite show. Do you love it? No, it's, what channel is that it's, on? It's, it's, it's on, actually on Netflix. It's, it's on a, Netflix. It's a, oh, I don't it's a Netflix. Netflix. It's okay. a Netflix I'm series. Sure it's, it's new. It's amazing. Orange is the New Black, it's called? Yeah, it's about yes. this housewife who ends up going to jail Show. for like 15 years for some drug thing she did when she was, she was like a 20-year-old. She was a um, drug pants show. It has but, so many great... It's like it's like the um, female version of Oz. Right. Oh, okay. So really one of the characters is a transgender, transgender. black 
a female. And she's actually a real trans. It's not some. Oh, she, it's oh, not really. It's not real. real trans they to play hired the a real trans actress. It's not some. And the it's... reason she's able to be in this jail is because she's already transitioned. So she, she, she has is, the sex it, change. Her driver's license says female. Okay. Yes, and so right. the thing is, is with her, um, they decide to cut um, funding in the jail, so they cut medical funding. Right. So, so they she cut can't her, get hormones. her hormones. Get so she fights in the show to get her hormones because she's so when. A sex change doesn't have her hormones, and you don't need as much as someone like me. I need more because I have to block the testosterone. Well, when you become a sex change, um, you have no hormones, so you have to have some kind of. Well, you're going through menopause, right? And I know enough about once somebody's already had the surgery, they have to several times a week dilate them stuff, stuff to uh-huh. keep the vagina yep. opening. How are you going to dilate? It's like a prison? piercing. Yeah, it's yeah. a big. Dildo. Well, after a while, you don't have to. After a so long now, you Diamond don't have D to said yeah it's a constant that they there have she to is do. she's a she's a she's a true she's transgender a, yeah, yeah. she true. got great boobies yeah she's a pretty woman when you see her as male on the show i think that they've um altered her uh body by oh there she is computer yeah computer because she has she real not boobs. looking pretty in that picture She's looking mean and mm-hmm. woo tore up. But it's great to see trans characters and actually played yeah. by a trans actress because right. that's the problem with our. It's either a boy playing us, or it's a woman playing us. It's never an actual. Well, trans. that's like there was a big discussion um, in one of the um, Nardia movies because they had all those little people and mm-hmm. they used regular sized people to play little people um, instead of hiring little people actors. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing. They shouldn't hire somebody to play a trans who's not a trans. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think, I, I, but I think for that show, if if you, it's so many diversities in that show. If you watch it, there's so many, it there's so many, there's Latina, there's blacks, and it's there's trans, and there's this this white girl who comes from suburbia that's right. never seen <laughs> what she's about to encounter and it's it, you know what's kind of a i don't know what it's like a it's like a it's a heart a heartwarming story to see how they all interact and how their lives all have different effects because what's great about it too is i think two characters in the show people think they're they're really mean but when you see the backstory on them and you come to find out who they are they're actually very warming but the but who they become or what people say behind their backs. Right. Mm. Like crazy eyes in there. Right. Crazy I love eyes crazy is eyes. Is actually very smart, but people think she's very dumb. Right. Oh, and she comes see, from a you're making me want to go watch she it. comes from a You'll adoptive. love it. But yeah. I would love it. Get, can I get it on the internet if, if it's you have to subscribe to Netflix. Well actually I think they have, they have a, a one month, month yeah. free oh. to try it right and now. You can see, you it's only like thirteen in. episodes. Yeah. yeah. And then it's uh, eight dollars a month after that. Oh, that's so something. yeah. To get it online. Yeah. Oh yeah, you so will all I need is fall in love with it. You're right, because that's all I need is another TV show. <laughs> I'm already mad because I can't. I've seen it all and can't wait. So I know. Wait I know. Till, you have to wait till next. I summer. think I watched it like three days. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw all, every really? episode. Okay, then I would love it. And I it's, love jail. It's by the. Anyway. It's by the person who did Weeds. So. Oh, okay. So it's a good show. Yeah, it's a real yeah, good show. Yeah, it's a real good show. I love the characters. It's just there's a there's a character on. Have you seen House of Lies on Showtime? Not yet. Okay, it's a it's a comedy. It's a half hour, but it's funny. But the son. Um, he's about 13 right now, and he dresses very much as a as a as a woman. And he's mm. always telling his mom, like, you know what? Can we go to the counter? I, I need to get some new eyeliner and stuff. <laughs> and the father's kind, of, you know, keep the, talking. The that's father, kinda, yeah. So yeah, it, that's kind of like on Glee. It's a great, it's a great um, character that this kid plays because he's a real smart kid, and he, you know, and you'll see him. You know, he'll have his his skinny jeans and he'll be um you know riding on a skateboard but he's got this you know glittery scarf and eyeliner going on you know no there's like that's like that on glee there's a character on glee that they introduced um he's he plays male yeah unique Mm -hmm. um and a lot of people think that it's a horrible person to represent our community or whatever he is actually he's uh, actually a male but he's but I don't know how to explain it, but um, I think a lot of people say, well, they hate it because he goes to school sometimes as a boy and then he performs as a girl, um, as unique. But I tell people all the time, I think that when you're going through that transition at that young of age, and yeah. you don't have the acceptance of your parents or whatever, you have to do. Find an outlet, right? Yeah. Yeah. An outlet so I think that. that that's a way for him to find an outlet. For me, it was theater. Uh, but for him, I think that 
that it, character. Do you know the whole backstory behind that character? They had the um, the ultimate Glee show where you could become yeah, yeah, yeah. a character on Glee. He is actually a transgendered male. He does actually dress up. I mean, he hasn't been through all the surgeries or everything, but in the very beginning, well, about halfway through the season of this this that reality show, yeah. he he came out and said, "Look, you know, this this boy that I'm, you know, playing for you guys is not really who I am." this is who I really am. And he came out and drag and, and sang mm -hmm. like a girl. And immediately he went from being kind of like a middle tiered, but because he could put his full everything he behind changed. this. It, amazing. And that's who he really is. And that's one of the things I like is that they allowed him to portray that on the show. I think technically probably in real life, he's probably just a cross dresser, which is, there's a lot of cross dressers that they, they don't want to be full time trans women, but they feel like they have a feminine part of them that, they need to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, like um, Eddie's Eddie, Eddie Izzard is a prime example of a crossdresser that's mm -hmm. straight or whatever. That that I lives. had a friend who had a roommate who was a crossdresser. He don't got more be. beautiful poontang than any guy yeah. who dressed up like a dude and went to a uh, just he'd come back with like three girls, <laughs> dressed up as a girl. He'd come home with three girls. I was like, dude, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Welcome back. Oh, no, no, welcome back. We're going on a break. Somebody's been um, smoking a hoo No, no, no. I was thinking about um, right, when right. we come back, I want to talk about a story I heard about the whole nature versus nurture thing. Um, but anyway, we'll be back in a minute at the Curvaceous Bounty of Sin City. Don't go away. Thank you.